India, the land of mysticism, spirituality, color, and spice. A land that is exotic, alluring, and has inspired my fantasy since childhood. A home to tigers and elephants, sadhus and gurus, techno prodigies and Bollywood stars, ancient crumbling ruins, vibrant pulsating cities, lush green jungle and snow-capped mountains. A landscape that is as varied as its people. 1.37 billion people. It's also the native home to around 2% of our Gibraltarian population. A small percentage, but one with a significant impact. A group of Sindhi traders, displaced from their homes seeking a new life, became an integral part of the Gibraltarian fabric, revolutionizing our main street, influencing our shopping habits, and integrating completely into our multi-ethnic society. I have come to India to discover why they came to Gibraltar and what it is they left behind. The earliest families arrived in Gibraltar in the 1800s. They were merchants and traders, leaving their homes in Hyderabad and Shikarpur, now modern-day Pakistan, in search of new business opportunities. Yet it was the partition of India in 1947 that proved to be a crucial turning point in Sindhi history. After nearly 200 years of British rule, the centerpiece of Britain's empire was cruelly dismantled. Partition was based on a notion that religion constituted nationality, so the country was divided into an Islamic state, Pakistan, and a secular state, India. There was large-scale violence as neighbors and communities turned on each other. The Sindhis fled their homes, with many making their way to Bombay. The Gateway of India. It was built in 1911 to commemorate the arrival of King George V. He was the then Emperor of India and his wife, Queen Mary. It stands proudly at the entrance to the port a mighty symbol of the country and the British Empire. Welcome to Bombay. One in every six people on the planet lives in India. And there is a birth here every second, a death every three, and a migrant arrives every minute. The Kupchan's dealings with Gibraltar began in 1893, when the family sent a scout to investigate potential business opportunities. But they made it their home in the 1930s and remain to this day. The Kupchans are a well-known family in Gibraltar and their businesses are synonymous with Main Street. So it's fitting that my first visit is to Kalpana Kupchan. I love that you've got, you've got family pictures all around your house. There's photographs everywhere. Yeah. So you're obviously a very close-knit family, and I've seen that from your family in Gibraltar. Yeah. But you're, you're still very close, even though you live here. You visit regularly, and they come here. That's right. And it's wonderful because, obviously, you take your daughter and your son to Gibraltar. That's and, right, yeah. And so they, they're yeah. experiencing That's their, it, yeah. their, their heritage, too. They love it, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In fact, they, uh, they've also got a bit of an accent, not an Indian accent, and people always say to them, they grew up imagining or telling people that they were foreign in India, both really? of them, separately. You know, because they've got a big gap, there's nine and a half years between the two. 
And funnily enough, it's like they've always felt that we're not from Bombay, we're from Gibraltar. So they reason. feel Gibraltarian? Yeah. And you, you know? feel Gibraltarian? I feel Gibraltarian, of course. Yeah. So when somebody asks you where you're from? Gibraltar. Yeah. That's it. Booth, yeah. your father is the is the first um, born first born yeah, in Gibraltar. Yeah, 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 that's right. Oh, your father's been the first in many things, hasn't he? Actually, he's <laughs> yeah. been quite the trailblazer. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your your memories of growing up there at the time. Did you feel that you were very different from the community from Gibral the rest of the Gibraltarian community, or not? At the very beginning, as I grew up, yes, I think we were because we were a little bit more community minded. So there was a club where everybody used to go. So if we went out, let's say, when I moved to Marina Court. There would be things like, oh, there, there goes the Indian girl, you know? So it was always like we were differentiated at school as well, but we were never treated badly. We were always, you know, welcomed as such. No, as a child, I think I grew up with a lot of freedom. We were all Main Street. I told you, like, how to we'll cross over bicycles, we, you know, cycling here and there. Boys who play football, we'd be following them around, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, never had anyone to take care of us. Like, I mean, we had maids when we helped help us at home. But it was like five or six, we would be on our own, you know, with friends and stuff like that. Can't imagine doing it with our kids today. Of course, being an Indian, by the time I was 13, 14, then mom and dad were watching, which boy is she talking about? Why are you talking to boys? It was became like, I said, but why did you give me so much freedom? It was gonna be like, you know, that eventually you want us to marry an Indian, you know? So I used to, I found it very hard to accept the fact that I should marry an Indian. So, so what is it like now for your daughter? How old is your daughter? She's 27. So I imagine that she's had a very different upbringing to you. She's had actually a lot of freedom, but the freedom to, to do what you want, choose your own life partner, that kind of thing. Look, yes. I've always said like, you know, I'm not, I don't want to try and force you to do anything. I'd rather you meet somebody, you know, and yeah. make it work and take your time. We leave the cool comfort of Kalpana's flat to meet Sachi. And as we walk down the streets, I am deeply surprised by connection to Gibraltar. For along the main road, you can find a memorial in honor of Prem Ramchandani, a pilot who bravely flew in many missions, defending his country from enemy attack. Prem Ramchandani was uncle to Nick, Veena, and Deepak Ramchandani. Well, talking about Gibraltar, I was chatting to your mom earlier and um, your mum was saying how she feels Gibraltarian. Now it's interesting, would, would you, do you feel Gibraltarian at all? I mean, you visit I was born home. and brought up here, so I am Indian, you know. Um, love Gibraltar. It's always been like the summer getaway because like, you, I want to spend time with my grandparents, or her full family is there. Yeah. Um, so I actually love both the places. Uh, so it's a bit of both, you know, sort of thing, and a bit of an exposure to both sides, both different lifestyles. But, yeah, I, I'm Indian. <laughs> <laughs> and I can imagine that you can appreciate how different they are. Yeah, very different. Um, I mean, as you know, like, India is, like, there's so many different, like, I don't know, culture, there's so many different food, there's, I don't know, there's just so much to talk about when it comes to India. Like, one of the things that I associate with, like, India is the food. Like, as you saw, like, with the pani puris and the sandwiches, and, I mean, there's, like, thousands of street food, and I love that. Um, oh, I, I concur. Yeah, so far, yeah. I'm, I love I'm a foodie, it too. <laughs> so like for me, it's like you know, like when I think about home, I think about I just think about how many good restaurants there are, how many um, flavors there are, you know, and and there's no shortage of it. Like even if you were to stay here for like two weeks or three weeks or whatever, you wouldn't you wouldn't you know like be able to like try everything. So, oh, don't say that. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to give it a good try. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never one to turn down a challenge, we head out in search of some of Bombay's famous street food. Its reputation as the hidden gem of Indian cuisine has been earned due to its flavoursome, mouth-watering combination of ingredients. I cannot wait. First on the menu is Bani Puri. Now, I've asked for this one to be made a little bit spicier because I like my spice and I think I can handle it, but um, obviously I've never tried real Indian food. So let's see how it goes. Mm. Yeah? Mm -mm -mm. 
this eating a bunny booty is an experience. It's actually really bizarre because it's such a contrast in textures. You've got this really crispy outer shell, which is really crunchy and very thin. And then you've got this very soft texture inside. It's cold, which you don't expect. It's got a real kick of spice and heat and, I don't know, chili, I don't know what it is. It hits you at the back of your throat. And then there's the sweetness of the date. It's really bizarre, but it's absolutely delicious. And I can completely understand why everybody whom I met in gym told me that one of the first things I had to do here in Bombay was eat bunny body. I could eat these all day. <laughs> Street light sounds. Uh, let's do this again. A little different this time. Uh, I told myself that money would never be a factor. Now I'm laughing at Benny Hanna's with benefactors. My son, my soul for an artist's love with them giant raptors. My chef cooking that steak and lobster on giant platters. Forsaking all I can for this path of master. Path to disaster and saved by the master. I'm hearing they laughter, uh. Took off my own grapes, yes, I'm blasted. Pockets is fatter. With that peace, what does it matter, man? I'm it's the end of my first day here in Bombay. And it's everything I expected and more. It's hospitable, it's loud, it's hot, it's vibrant, it's colorful, it's crazy and intense, and I love it. I ain't innocent, the sinner, sinner, sinister. The sin within had it sent it into my signature. Don't be offended, I meant it that I'm a minister. But the sin was simulated, now I'm sitting similar. They say no cinema, I'm finished as a swindler. Say sweeping up these chains like I've never been a prisoner. Exchange these chains for angels in my perimeter. Never be the same, I'm flying. Oh, but I'm forgiven, bro. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm flawed, but I'm forgiven, bro. Uh, uh, I'm flawed, but I'm forgiven, bro. Uh, I'm forgiven. It's easy to be dazzled by the lights and sophistication of Bombay, but something tells me that I'm not experiencing real India. So when a friend of a friend offers to show me around his village and learn about his life, I jump at the chance. And as soon as we leave the city, I encounter a different reality. As the day breaks, I take a walk along a river people have been sleeping along the steps of a temple complex and they are now carrying out their daily ablutions. It's quiet and contemplative as people wash, pray and prepare for their day ahead. It begins to dawn on me that this country can simply not cope with its vast numbers of inhabitants. There are many who are born on the street and will always live on the street. The landscape continues to change as we drive deeper into the Maharashtran countryside. I am eager to meet Ricky. He's a dynamic and positive force who works tirelessly to improve the lives of those around him. Thank you very much. Thank you, these are beautiful. They're beautiful, thank you. What's your name? Shutej. Shutej. My name is Paula. Ricky, so how many children do you have here? We are having uh, 22 students here. The autistic kids, Down syndrome, and mentally retarded. The government fund you? Is it so no, charity no, no. based? Charity based. Uh, because uh, uh, we started in 2012, so every, everything is on charity based level. And are you surviving? Uh, we are surviving, but we are fighting also. 
the life is very short you have to enjoy you have to do uh, you just spread uh, happiness and be happy that's very important and the yes. work you're doing is very important i'm sure that you're going to make a massive difference to these children's lives yes thank you thank you I've, i'm finding it very significant that we're here at uh, at your school and it's called krishna and we've just you've just taken me to the temple in in the village down the road and they happen to be celebrating lord krishna's birthday today krishna is a major deity in hinduism he is worshipped as the eighth incarnation of vishnu and also as the supreme god in his own right he is the god of compassion tenderness and love and is one of the most popular and widely revered indian divinities the temple was ablaze with color and music it was a joyful celebration led by the most charismatic and effervescent preacher i have ever seen his dancing was truly a sight to behold i sat amidst a rainbow of color my drab clothes put to shame by the spectacular saris on display i attempted to blend into the background but my presence did not go unnoticed and soon enough i was called up onto the stage and welcomed into the community with open arms the blowing of trumpets and the presentation of a coconut And we're going into the kitchen where it's your mother. Yes. That's yes, cooking. She's Does your mum come here to cook every day? Yes. Yes. So your mother works with yes, you? Yes, I have to come here. Here you can see. She is making junka. Hello. My name is Karkar. Hello. My name is Karkar. She is my mom. I feel I am dishonoring your mother and your food. No, no, no. I must will try no. harder. And we are very happy that you are trying and I hope I believe in positive things. So just take center here, no? It's humbling and touching to discover that the people who have the least often give the most. Yes, very good. Okay? Sticking to my hand. For today, for today we are you, you can use this. Asa kare the. That is also different style, huh? Eh? Uh, that you see, that was easier. You could have taught me that one. Ah, yeah, that was easier. Ah. This you can do? Yes. Yes. Okay, then make it for, for that one. Yes. Ah. Ah. <laughs> That's what happens when you get cocky. Oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear! Okay, just no, no, wait, wait, wait. We can fix this. Put on that. Yes, very good. Now put some water fast. Ah, not like this. Oh, sorry, ah. sorry. <laughs> ah, down. Ah, yes, yes. Under. Ah, make it free and, and put fast. Yes, very good. We are always saying when in our my childhood when my mother was teaching me, she said, "Yes, you made very good uh, uh, Indian map." Ah, so very good map of India. Nice. Now she's saying you eat when you are you like this. Mm. This click looks like the devil on a plate. Mm. Mm. It's hot and spicy but perhaps not as hot as as I initially thought. But what's really interesting is that it's garlic it's really really garlicky this is you know el pan de tomate con aceite this has to be the indian version which would be amazing well is amazing with this our journey continues and i appear to have picked up a few intrepid explorers along the way yes you're black i'm black yes okay well i'm not very black i think you're very black
lot going on in this particular region of Maharashtra today. We were driving on our way to the fort, which has been our destination all along. But we keep on encountering beautiful, magical surprises. I've used the word surprise a lot because this truly is the land of surprises. And as we've driven by here, I had to ask him, he said, what's going on? And he goes, this is a day in which many people decide to get married together. They share that moment. So there's 15 weddings going on here. Hence the amount of celebrations and color and, and festivities. So we're going to go in and take a closer look. So these are families that perhaps are, don't have as much money to spend on the weddings because they're pretty grand affairs here. They can go on for up to four days. Yes. So some families, that is, that, is, that is a big ask, which it is back home too. It's crazy that people take out loans for weddings. But here, they've had a very clever concept and it's a really good idea. And what they do is, they share the wedding ceremony. Let's see if we can find the bride. There are 15 of them, so we may be lucky in finding one. We go inside to see. You can see this now. Oh. You are the groom. I am so pleased to meet you. It's such an honor to be at your wedding. Thank you very much. As I have discovered early on in my trip, the Indians are an incredibly generous people and I was showered with gifts and blessings and invited to dance and partake of the celebrations. Most alarmingly, I was invited to bestow blessings of my own on the young nervous brides draped in the most lavish finery. The groom's excitement was palpable and the air reeked of pheromones as they disconcertedly clutched hold of wooden phalluses wrapped in cloth and waved them around their heads. The constant beating of drums lay a frantic soundtrack to this wild, animalistic celebration. I'm so pleased to meet you. It's an honor. You look beautiful. I wish you a very happy marriage. Yet I couldn't help but notice the very obvious difference in behavior exhibited by the female and male participants. In fact, this difference was something I had increasingly become aware of as the day developed. Women are not treated equally to men here. I had expected that. They are the child bearers and homemakers, yet are expected to work in the fields and factories, hard manual labor with very little rights or choice. And they bear this with great dignity and stoic acceptance. Yet what surprised me was this contrast of the soft with the hard. These ladies are beautiful, striking, colorful peacocks. They sparkle and glisten as their bangles and saris catch the light. They are coquettish and embrace their femininity without shame or need for moderation. This glorious celebration of beauty and womanhood, embodied so elegantly by these ladies, does not in any way temper their strength or steely determination. They may have no choice but to be submissive, but they exude a power and sense of self-respect which is almost tangible. This journey promises to be very different to the others. On my previous trips, I've had the opportunity to explore my roots, who I am, where I came from, what has shaped me. But I can feel that this journey will affect me right to my core, make me evaluate my own beliefs and values, my behavior and responsibility towards others our global responsibility towards humanity. They say that people either love or hate India. I expect I'll experience both in equal measures. <laughs>